On today's show, Toyota's profits are clobbered by the strong yen. New details leak out about a mid-engine Corvette, and a look at how automakers can protect their intellectual property outside of the United States. All that and more coming right up on AutoLine Daily. This is AutoLine Daily for August 4th of 2016. As a way to pay for its massive product offensive, FCA considered selling its Italian parts supplier, Magneti Morelli, last year. The company received several offers, but ultimately held on to it. But now the supplier is back on the sales block and is receiving interest from an unlikely source. Bloomberg reports that Samsung is in advance talks to buy some or all of Magneti Morelli. The deal could happen by the end of the year and may be worth around $3 billion. Samsung is said to be interested in the supplier's lighting, in-car entertainment, and telematics business. As we noted last year when this topic came up, CEO Sergio Marchion can't just sell Magneti Morelli to anyone since SEA relies so heavily on it for many of its parts and components. So this suggests the automaker is comfortable with Samsung taking over Magneti. The value of the yen plays a large role in the financial results for Japanese automakers. A weak yen usually means better profits, while a strong yen cuts into those earnings. Right now, the yen is strong, and that really put a dent in Toyota's results. The company sold 2.2 million vehicles last quarter, which is up nearly 3% from a year ago. But that was the only bright spot. Total revenues fell about 6% to $61 billion. The company posted an operating profit of about $6 billion, but that's a drop of 15%. And its net income also plunged 14.5% to $5.1 billion. And because the value of the yen is improving, Toyota lowered its full-year forecast. Tesla also revealed its earnings for last quarter, and the results are somewhat mixed. The company delivered just over 14,000 Model S and Xs in the second quarter. Its revenue hit $1.3 billion, a gain of 33% and its operating profit also shot up 33% to $512 million. However, the company posted a net loss of $290 million, which is down 60% from a year ago. But the company expects things to turn around. Thanks to production improvements, Tesla expects to deliver 50,000 vehicles in the second half of the year. Still to come, a look at how automakers can protect their patents around the globe. Auto Line Daily is brought to you by Bridgestone Tires, your journey, our passion. Dow Automotive Systems, advanced materials that deliver better results. And by Lear, a global leader in automotive seating and electrical systems. With so much innovation going on in the auto industry, protecting intellectual property is more important than ever. And now that the industry is more globally connected, it makes it that much harder. So what can automakers do to make sure that information is kept in-house? Recently on AutoLine This Week, we're joined by Dr. Crystal Shepard, the director of the Midwest Patent and Trademark Office. In the following clip, she discusses how the agency helps automakers protect secrets overseas. Well, there's two answers to your question. The first is, we often have people say, you know, someone's doing this in China and they're selling it to like Indonesia or somewhere, but pick your own two countries. And um, uh, can I, how do I stop them? And the first thing I say to them is, uh, did you patent it in China or Indonesia? The rights are territorial. You really, ha- you have to understand where your markets are, where you care, where you're actually going to litigate. Because just because you have a patent in the United States, it does not translate to other countries. So that's the first thing. The second is we have lots of different mechanisms to help you. We have something called the um, the I- IP attaches, intellectual property attaches, who are in country, in different countries. And Ford or others in smaller companies can go to them and say, well, these are things are happening. And they will, will, will help negotiate on some of these. They're not, they're not lawyers. You have your, your uh, counsel there. But they can help. You can watch that entire discussion right now on our website, or you can find it on our YouTube channel. And you don't want to miss out on our coverage of the Car Management Briefing Seminars. John is interviewing a number of the top leaders in the industry at the conference. So look for our coverage on our website, autoline.tv, or you can find it on our YouTube channel. Coming up next, rumors of a mid-engine Corvette heat up, and Hyundai drops the Genesis Coupe. For the people at Dow, 
Racing is a sport and a science. We enjoy one and learn from the other. But like most competitive people, we like winning at both. This is the human element at work. Dow. Rumors of a mid-engine Corvette have really been picking up lately, and now the Detroit News is adding on. According to its sources, GM plans to unveil a mid-engine VET in early 2018 and start selling it a year after that. They also say it will eventually be the only Corvette produced. The current engine in front of the driver's setup will go away after 2021. If indeed that is the case, I really hope GM doesn't increase the price of the car too much. For many people, that's the car's greatest selling point. And speaking of product news, Autoblog reports that Hyundai is dropping the Genesis Coupe at the end of this year. Now before you go shedding any tears, a company official confirms a replacement is under development that will fall under the new Genesis luxury brand. That brand also announced pricing for the all-new G80, which replaces the Hyundai Genesis. The base model, with rear-wheel drive and a 3.8-liter V6, starts a bit over $42,000, including destination charges. That's about $2,600 more than its predecessor, but you do get a whole bunch more content. The top-of-the-line G80 with a 5-liter V8 starts out at about $55,500. Look for the cars to start hitting dealer showrooms this month. And be sure to check out Autoline After Hours this afternoon. Joining John and Gary is Mary Ann Wright, the head of global engineering and product development at Johnson Controls. So to learn more about one of the world's leading automotive suppliers and its newest technology, tune into our website, autoline.tv at 3 p.m. Eastern time for some of the best insider discussions in the automotive industry. But that wraps up today's show. Thanks for watching. Please join us again here tomorrow.